We will be continuing our lectures in analytics for business and economics with lecture number eight, working with data frames, lists, and disks. So without any further ado, let's jump in. We're jumping in to working with data frames, lists, and disks. So let's get started with loading and saving data. The first thing we want to think about is loading data. That's probably the one of the first steps you're going to do in any kind of data analysis is figuring out how to get the data from whatever form it's in. And that can come in all forms. It can be anything from as, as awful as a PDF file that you have to hand type all the data into up to, say, a massive database that you are pulling from um, the web. And there's lots and lots of different things. We could have a whole class just on, um, a whole course just on data processing and how to get the data into the computer. We're not going to do that in this course. We're going to take just one lecture for um, some basic loading of data. And that basic loading of data, we're going to use two basic functions because we're going to look at two different data types we can bring in. All right, so the two different data files we're going to look at is number one, a um, a file from R, so the native format of R. We've we've come down here and I've created a file called my underscore data dot R data. Um, you'll end up using a save function to get that, but in the last chapter or in the last lecture, we use save dot image to create a data similar to or a, a file similar to this. It's the same basic process. Um, and, and I'll differentiate between save and save dot image here in the in the next section of the lecture. But for right now, let's just load it. And we're going to use the load function, LOAD. And basically what the load function can do is it can load native R files. And so if it's a native R data file, it can load it. And so we're just going to bring in here my data dot R data. And so let me do that, my underscore data dot R data. OK, well, let's try this. Oh, wait a minute. No, that doesn't work. It says object not found. What does that mean? Well, if we look over here in the environment section, we see there's nothing there. It says the environment is empty. That means it's looking for a variable called this name. All right. We don't have a variable called this name. We actually want the file name. So we have to pass it as a string or put it inside quotation marks. In Microsoft Excel, this would be called text. Um, I Whenever it's a bunch of letters that we're supposed to put all together as in a um, something that's readable with with characters and not not necessarily numbers I'm gonna call that a string um, and that we denote that by putting it in quotation marks we could also put it in single quotes but I want to show you one other really cool feature in our studio if I highlight this whole thing just like that and then I type say a single quote it puts it in single quotes. It, it encapsulates it for me. So that's kind of nice. Uh, that's different behavior than anywhere else in the world of, of computing. Anywhere else, if you highlight it and type a character, it's going to overwrite what you ha highlighted. But here, for, for things like quotation marks, um, parentheses, stuff like that, it'll, it'll surround it for you. It's really kind of a nice feature. And note the single quote in R is the same as the double quote. So you can do either one. And I'm going to run this, and oh, well, crumb! It's still wrong. What am I? What am I doing wrong? Oh, well, let's see here. It says error in read character. Something, something, something. Cannot open the connection. Okay, that is completely and utterly useless. I have no idea what that means. It's just a bunch of gibberish. I hope you agree with me. So let's go back and see if I can figure it out. Oh, my data, our data. Wait a minute. I think I see the problem. Looky there. That D is lowercase, and look at my file name right over here. The D is uppercase. Yep, it's case sensitive, and if I fix that, boom, it loads my data. And inside of this data file is the empty cars data set. All right, I know, a little boring, but hey, what the heck. All right, the second kind of way, and probably the most common way of storing and pulling data in is what's called a CSV file. Now, CSV file stands for comma separated values. Okay, now here's an important warning about CSV files. CSV is a file format, comma separated values. In other words, it's just a big text file where each column, each row is a new line and each column is separated by a comma. All right, very, very simple, 
very, very easy to spread amongst all kinds of different platforms. That's why it's used a lot. It doesn't take a lot of space to, to um, put a lot of data in there because ASCII text doesn't take much up. Um, I'm sorry, ASCII text. It's just a text file. Don't worry about the ASCII part. In any event, um, all right, very, very common, but CVS is a pharmacy. Um, you know, it's, it's um, I think it's headquartered in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Um, but CVS is a pharmacy, and yes, it's really easy to mess that up, at least if you're me. And I have looked for hours in my code for an error that I just couldn't find because I, I wrote CVS instead of CSV. So be really, really careful, comma, separated values, CSV. All right, that little warning aside, how do we bring that in? We're gonna use the read.csv function. Now there are a number of functions that you can use to read a CSV file, all right? Read.csv is the base R function, so it's the very most basic. And if you need to do like a ginormous, one terabyte big CSV file, it may or may not be the right function to use. But for all the little stuff that we're going to do, it's going to be just fine. And um, we're going to keep it simple. So what the read.csv function does, we'll just type this in. Read, R-E-A-D, dot, and it's right there on top. And I'm going to come over here to my CSV file. It's my underscore data dot CSV. All right, so I need to put that in quotation marks. My underscore data dot csv and note i put it in double quotes here same thing i can put it in single quotes their identity r doesn't know the difference it's fine okay and what is that going to do well i can press command enter on a mac or control enter on a pc and just run this this line so let me do that real quick it brings in i happen to have saved the empty cars data set ahead of time in a csv format it just brings it in as a data frame all right but here it it outputted the data frame to the to the screen we don't want that we want to actually save it so we're going to put right here in front my underscore data and the assignment operator and then we're going to send the output of the csv function to this object named my data and we'll run that bingo and Another really cool thing, if I highlight my data, just highlight that and I hit command enter again, I just execute just that part I highlighted. And boom, there's my data frame. All right, so there's loading data. There's two different ways of loading data. The one way that I haven't shown you yet that we might look at a little bit later is how to load an Excel data file. And when we get there, I'll show you that, but you need an additional package to load Excel. and to be honest, it's it's a little needlessly complicated, but um, once 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 you've been shown how to do it, kind of the the proper way or at least the simple way, um, it won't be too bad. All right, next, saving data. Maybe I should have saved data before I loaded it, but I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. Let's come over here. We're going to put in here and let's talk about saving some data. We can use the save function. What the save function does is it puts it in an R data format or the native format for um, R. It's very similar to save.image. The only difference is save.image saves everything in the global environment, where the save function saves only what you want it to. So I have two different um, data frames here. If I did save.image, it would save both of these data frames. Since I don't want to save both of these data frames, I only want to save one. Let me save my data, underscore data. And then I have to give it a file name. So I'm going to hit the um, tab button and it gives me a list of all of the possible, um, all of these possible arguments for the function. But I, all I care about is, is file for right now. And I'm going to say, I want this file to be called, I'm going to call it, I've already got a file called mydata.csv, so, or I'm sorry, mydata.rdata, so that's kind of boring. Let's call it, I don't know, cool data. 
underscore. Well, let's don't call it that. Let's call it something better. MT cars. All right, that's boring. I know. R data. All right, MT cars dot R data. Now, something that's important to note. I can call it anything one. I could call it MT cars dot R. That would be confusing though because dot R is usually an R script. R data usually indicates that it's going to be a data file, but you can call it anything you want to. I mean, um, it's best not to use um, things like rproj or rmd or csv, things that are known file extensions that come known to come after the dot, uh, but you can name it anything you want to. It's conventional to call it R data though. And we'll do that. And notice now we have an R data file called mtcars. So mtcars.rdata right there. The next thing we can do is what if we want to write this as a CSV file? Well, we can use the write.csv. It means basically write is or write to the disk. And I'm going to write my data to the disk. And I want to call it a file name. So I'll hit the this and go file. And let's call it mtcars, because that's what's in there, .csv. All right, and will that work? No, it will not, because I need to put this in quotation marks. Since I forgot, I'll highlight it, and then I'll put the quotation marks, and there they go. And let me just run this. And now I have an mtcars CSV file. Now let's look and see what this CSV file looks like, just to see what the text file looks like. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say I want to view file. And see this is what it is. It's just each line of the data frame. So the first line, that's all the titles. All right, so all the variable names. And then each each row, that's an observation. And we have each one is each column is separated by a comma. That's all it is. I know this isn't very readable. But you know, you can kind of read it, which is nice, as well as it's easy to pull into the computer. Okay, so there we go. We've got some, we have loaded and saved some variables. Next thing we want to do, how, let's have some useful things to know about variables. The first thing we can do, and we should talk about a little bit more, we've used them already, but the assignment operators. There are two types of assignment operators. Okay. So let's talk about those just a little bit more. The, um, the arrow, that's the kind of the oldest assignment operator. It's the one you basically should use most of the time. The equal sign, basically you want to use that anytime you're inside of a function and you're dealing with a named argument. All right, so file is the name of an argument and I want it to be this, so I use the equal sign. Um, I would not suggest using the arrow here. All right, it will have unexpected results. And we've, I think we've talked about that before. So there you go. Um, we can assign different types of variables. So one of those types is a numeric. All right, and we can see here if we just assign a number, we can use the combine function to assign a list of numbers. So we've talked about vectors before. We can also have a character. But what's really nice is sometimes you want to know what type of variable is because you don't know what it is at, um, ahead of time. And so you have these functions. It's a lot like in Excel where you have is air or is, you know, the is dot functions. Same kind of thing. Is dot numeric answers the question, is this a numeric type? If it is, it responds true. If it isn't, it responds false. Same thing with his character is logical. So these are actually kind of useful. Sometimes you do need to check the type. Um, all right, so the next thing we want to talk about is factors. Factors are really important in um, doing um, quantitative analysis um, because what factors are, are what we call in statistics a categorical variable. So for example, say we want to do some, some analysis of pet owners and we have some pet owners who are cat owners and some pet owners who are dog owners. And we know that the IQ of dog owners must be higher than that of cat owners. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, but we have some factor and we wanna know about, 
I don't know, maybe we're a pet store and we want to know which owner typically spends more money per month on their pet, cat owners or dog owners. Okay, well, we could figure out what their monthly spending is. Maybe we have, you know, maybe it's like Petco and they have their rewards program where they're keeping track of data for everyone. Um, and maybe we know what kind of pet they own. And so we can put that in. But how do we keep track of whether or not they have a cat or a dog? Well, that's what's called categorical values. Because there's no sense in which cat is greater than dog or dog is greater than cat. Despite what cat owner or dog owners would say, um, there isn't a sense in which they're numeric. It's just two different categories. Okay, and so what do we do? We use what's called a factor. And so we can use this factor function to do that. And there's a couple of ways we can do it, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on, we're gonna focus on two. Um, and we'll save one for a little bit later when we have a data frame, okay? And so we're gonna do my underscore factor. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna store in that we're going to use the factor function and that tells our okay I'm giving you categorical data all right and so now what we're going to do is I don't want to type all this out so I'm going to just copy this cat dog cat cat dog dog whatever it is copy we'll paste this in and then what I want to do is I want to type my factor again so we can see what it looks like didn't push it long enough. Bing. So it tells me, here's my data, cat, dog, cat, dog, dog, and my levels. I have two different levels, cat and dog. These are my two different categories, right? There's two different, there's, there's cat and there's dog. Every one of them is either, every entry here is either a cat or a dog, not both, right? And so there, that means there's only two categories. If I add in another one, fish, no, not that, F-I-S-H, there we go. And I reran it, then I have obviously fish and I have three levels, cat, dog, fish. All right, so let's, let's do this one more time a little differently because I'm gonna show you a function. This is probably not how you're going to interface with this, with, with categorical data. Probably what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull that data in. All right, so you're gonna have something like this. I'm gonna have a variable, we'll call this not a factor yet. All right, and so if I, if I try to figure out what this is, okay, so let me go ahead and I'll put this here. Okay, we'll run this. Do, notice it doesn't give me any levels. It's just it's just a character vector. All right, so it's just a list of of strings of these these of text. All right, and if I do structure str, not a fact, not a string yet, and just run that, it tells me it's a character one to six. So let's say I want to make this a factor. So let's call this now it is a factor I can do as dot factor and in fact look at this there's a whole bunch of these as fill in the blank okay well what those do is they they're called coercion um, functions they coerce a variable of one type into a variable of another type if it can. So as dot factor does that. And so I'm gonna give that the not a factor yet variable. And then let's go ahead and we'll copy that again. And we'll run this command. And then we'll run that one. And boom, now it's a factor again. Okay, so 
this is actually the more common way that you're going to deal with factors because you're not going to type all these in usually you're going to pull them in so let's do a quick example of that okay so let me go ahead and pull up a new one and we have our empty cars all right so let's just look at what empty cars looks like all right now let's come over here and we have all right, so let's take, for example, um, this one. I think that one is for the um, automatic transmission is what AM is. All right, so it's one if it's automatic, zero otherwise. So it's saying that's a number because it's, it's what we call an indicator variable or a dummy variable. But let's change that. So I'm going to do dollar. I'm going to do empty cars dollar sign, then AM, and then the assignment operator, empty cars, dollar sign, AM, but I screwed up. I want to make this as dot factor and put empty cars like that. And then what I'm going to do is empty cars so we can see it again, just like this. And notice sometimes it has a little X there that means there's something wrong well sometimes it's a, it was a little slow it, it cleared up but um, that's sometimes an indicator that you have a little error in your code and that's a way to find those bugs let's do that empty cars dollar sign am could not find a function oh I misspelled factor so let me do this again as dot factor there we go that'll work now and let's come over here to AM and notice it really hasn't changed anything. It's just now it says factor instead of one or zero. And why that's important is um, when we get a little farther along, we start doing things like linear regression. We'll be able to use that factor in a much, a much better way than what we could if it was just a numeric variable. All right. So, and now for the star of the show, data frames. What on earth is a data frame? Well, a data frame is the main unit of data in, in R. So it's the, it's, the, it's the main data structure that we'll work with in R. And you can think of it as something like one page out of an Excel workbook. All right, so you know well Excel workbook, you have a page out of that is just this big rectangle. And you think of each row having um, an observation and each column being a different variable all right so you can think of this big rectangle of variables where each column can have a different data type all of the row all of the rows within within a column have to be the same data type but each column can be different but each row corresponds to a single observation from our data set so let's start out by making a data frame so we're going to make one by hand. We'll call this my data frame. I'm going to call it DF for data frame. Okay. If you see me with a, 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 a abbreviation DF, it either means degrees of freedom, although not very, not very likely. It almost always means data frame. All right. When I'm doing it and then I'm going to do data frame. So data dot frame. And that makes a data frame. And so what we can do now is, and notice I just hit return to put it on a new, put the next thing on a new line. Very common in R to spread out a function like this and make it a little easier to read. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to have some names of some people. So name, and that's going to equal. And then I have to use the combine function to give it uh, John and a Jane. Nope. Put in quotation. Notice how when I push one quotation mark, I get two. All right. R knows you're going to have one in the beginning, one at the end. So it always puts two. Sometimes that gets a little annoying, um, especially when you're first getting used to it. Oop, I better spell name right. N-A-M-E. All right. Perfect. Now I'm going to hit comma. Next, age. And notice I'm using equal signs here because this is a this is a function. 
this is inside of the function, I want to use equal signs. All right, this is about the only place where I'm going to say, hey, you, you need to use equal signs. And then we're going to say they're 30 and 25. And then one other important thing to notice, I don't have a comma here. All right, so at the end, the last argument, the last on my list of um, variables that I want to put in, no comma. And that's the case for all functions. All right, so for all functions in R, the very last argument of the function needs to have no comma. Otherwise, R is going to think there's, a, there's an argument coming, and it'll give you a weird error. I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead then and copy this, and let's put it right here, and let's see what we get. Bing! There we go. There's our name and our age. Name is character. Age is a it, double, means it's a double floating point or double precision floating point. Um, variable basically just means it's a real number. All right, so it's a number. Okay, easy peasy. And then what can we do? We can, well, we can get stuff inside of there. All right. Um, let me, I want to show you one more time that I'm going to put a comma here. And that's wrong, but let's see what happens. Bing. Data frame. Argument is missing with no default. That's not very clear. Um, the, the, the error is not a very clear error, but basically what that almost always means is you've got this errant comma there on the very last argument. So we run that. Easy peasy. So let's go ahead and we'll come down here and we'll do some more stuff. What about actually getting access to the different parts of a data frame? Well, just like with a list or anything else where we have parts, in R we can use the dollar sign to get access to it. So I've shown you that a little bit already, but now let's do it explicitly. We've talked a little bit about this with MT cars, how MT cars is a data frame and we can access parts of it. Well, let's look at our data frame. So my underscore data frame, so underscore DF. Okay, bingo. And then I'm gonna hit a dollar sign and notice how it gives me, okay, here are the things that are in there. All right, and it even gives me a little bit of um, help as to, you know, what, you know, what, a little more information about what's inside of that name. And same thing. All right, so let's say I want the name. And if I run that, Bing, I get John Jane. Perfect. Okay, another way to do this would be to my data frame. Now this I find a little confusing. If I want the actual values in there, like with the dollar sign, I need to use a double bracket. And then I could say inside of here, in quotation marks, name. And I could do it that way same thing if I did a single bracket it would not it wouldn't give me the same thing it would give me a list of these things and so it's see here it actually gives me the columns like it's part of the data frame rather than um, the actual stuff inside the data frame so in general we don't really use the 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 bracket that often to access stuff inside a data frame. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the single bracket versus double bracket in a little bit later. Okay, next. Adding new columns. How do we add new columns? Well, there are several ways to do that. The easiest way to do it for right now is going to be brute force. We just do my underscore, and then we're going to do df to get our data frame. I'm going to dollar sign, and then I'm going to name it the new column. So new, oftentimes in R, we use a dot to um, replace a white space. Column. Use our assignment operator just like that, and then we just have to give it all right, some data. All right, now it's important that you give it the same number of observations as is in the data frame. So here we our data frame has two rows. 
So we better give it two option two um, two observations. If we gave it one observation or three observations, it's going to throw an error, and that won't work. But let's go ahead. And then, forgive me, let's go ahead my underscore df. And there we go, I have my new column. This oftentimes is the easiest way to do it. There are other ways. Um, if we get a little bit farther along, we'll talk a little bit about the tidyverse way of dealing this. But for right now, this works just fine. Next thing. Well, we have data frames. Um, another important um, data structure is called a list. And a list is just a group of a whole bunch of different objects. All right, it can, a list could contain a data frame. It could contain a bunch of data frames. It could contain um, a bunch of variables just like this. All right, and notice they're all different types. So we use the list function Sorry. We use the list function to make this list. Easy peasy. Got a whole bunch of stuff. John, his age is 30. His scores are this. Okay. This isn't a very efficient way of storing all this, but, you know, it works. Then I can come by and look at that. And here's what you get. Right. Each component of this list contains stuff. Um... There you go. So how do I access elements of the list? Well, as you can see, I can use the dollar sign, right? So if I come in here and I look at my list, right? What do I call that? My list. And I can hit a dollar sign. It's going to give me the things that are inside of it. So name, if I run that, John, bingo, there we are. Notice how that took a little bit of time. Sometimes our Studio Cloud does because at that moment in time, there's a bunch of hits on their server. Okay, we'll just keep going. Um, another way to do that would be to use the double um, bracket. So if you use a single bracket, you're going to get, we'll come down here. If you use a single bracket, you're going to get the list, the actual part of the list. So like we showed in the um, with the data frame, you got the column of the data frame. Essentially, you got a one column data frame back. Um, if you use the double bracket, you'll actually get the value inside of that. So if I want the value John from name, I have to use double brackets. If I want the list of names that has John in it, I use a single bracket. That to me is a little confusing. If it doesn't exactly make sense, that's okay. When you really need it to, someday it will. And with that, we're going to call it good for this lecture.